everybody. We're, We're the, the Scots. Scots. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget. Okay, bye. Good morning. <clears throat> it's Tuesday morning. Not only did I have a rough night last night, went to bed late, didn't sleep too well, woke up extremely tired, but I had to look on the news and see what happened yesterday to the young man named Dante Wright. As a black woman that just gave birth recently, six months old, he just turned yesterday, just gave birth to a young black man. A young black boy, excuse me, a young black boy. And to know that he's gonna grow up, in Jesus' name, he's gonna grow up and become a young black man. The fear of something happening to him it resonates with me every day no mother wants to go through this no father wants to go through the type of pain that these families going through that they have gone through that Dante's family is going through right now I'm gonna say this can't breathe because society society doesn't want us to breathe and it proves that every single day every single day prime example the man who went into that salon that spa in Atlanta and killed all those people eight people and what did the police do maneuvered him off the road and he was arrested. He's still breathing. The boy who went into the church and killed those black people, the black worshipers. I'm not gonna say their name, I know their name. I'm not gonna mention their names, okay? The killer's names, we're not gonna say their names. What the police do? Come and arrest him. They're still breathing. Dante Wright can't breathe. Trayvon Martin can't breathe. Sandra Bland can't breathe. Breonna Taylor can't breathe. Eric Gardner can't breathe. Elijah McCain can't breathe. Philandro Castile can't breathe. All these names and more. There's so many. Tamir, Tamar Rice, I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. Tamar Rice can't breathe. Like, there's so many. There's so many, so many in the last few years, last couple of years, in the last year. Can't breathe because society doesn't want us to breathe. And it proves that every single day. It's, there are no words that can be said to make this feel better to make his family feel better, to make these families feel better. There's no words. Something has to change. And if you feel and you see these things going on within your circle, police your circle. Policemen, police the other policemen. If you see something they're doing wrong, police them. Change the, I just, be with our young black men every single day I've gotten to the point now that when I see young black men driving in their cars walking down the street hanging out with their friends going to play basketball hooping like I say 
prayer for them. I saw a young black man, a young black man, excuse me, um, police officers had him. Had him pinned up, excuse me. Oh, Lord, she just hopped right in front of me. Had him pinned up at QT. There were six officers, one guy. He looked to be no more than I'd say about maybe 20. Maybe 20, maybe. Could have been younger than that. Six officers, one guy. Had him all on the ground, handcuffed at, at the gas station. And I just quickly prayed for him, said, God, please, you know, I don't know what happened. If they take him to jail, let him make it there safely. If he's released, let him make it there safely. We just have to pray for our sons that they make it to where they're going safely. We have to have these conversations with our children, letting them know, oh, there's some places you can't go. And, you know, if you have these type of friends, just remember, you can't do the type of stuff they do because you don't look like them. Remember that when you're pulled over, you need to keep your hands in plain sight on the steering wheel at all times. And if they tell you to get something, you better let them know what you're doing before you do it. But guess what? We do that and they still take our life. It's not right. It's not fair. <laughs> This is like another form of lynching. You just keep killing us. I just pray that one day, one day, one day soon, that people will stop seeing our young black men, that people will stop seeing our young black boys, that people will stop seeing black people, period, as threats just because the color of our skin that we're born into. Just because of our color. Just because of our color. And it's been this way for decades. And now we have video of the hatred going on every day. Video. And people still get off. Breonna Taylor's killers, they got off. You give the family money. What does that do to bring back a loved one? What did she do? She was asleep in her bed. Because you thought, you thought, you thought, and you did not even knock. You thought that someone in there was selling drugs. But then you come and, you know, pat the back of her family. Oh, here's some money. Come on, man. We don't need money. We need change. We need change. God help us. Anywho, so when I'm at the gym, I'm not going to go our way. Come on, y'all. Um, when I'm at the gym, I always watch the news. I specifically stand or work out in front of the TVs with the news on because that's that's how I get my news feel. Because when I'm at home working, I try not to turn on the TV too early in the morning when the news is on. Excuse me, I'm a nose kind of burning. But I try not to turn on the TV too early in the morning because I know it will distract me. So, you know, I was watching the news and on our Fox News channel, Channel 4, they always do a tell it to Tim. Tim is one of the um, anchor people that's there. Tim been there for a year since I was a kid. And he does tell it to Tim. Well, basically, people call in and they complain or they state their opinions or grievances, what have you, about things that are going on in the news today. So you guys know the other day um, I talked about the shooting of our young black men. The latest one was Dante Wright and then unfortunately i believe yesterday there was another shooting of a young black boy 13 years old and this happened in oh i don't want to mess up. i think this is in Chicago. this is in chicago because i saw their mayor chicago and then um they had the mass shooting just last night at the fedex center in indianapolis and god i'm just i'm praying for all the families any families that were affected by that shooting lost loved ones anyone injured 
God, anyone that's been involved with all this violence that's been happening this week. Oh, Y'all, so much violence. Oh my God, so much violence going on. Not just with, oh my God. We have our young black men, yes. And I, I take that one more. Oh no, I'm not gonna say that because it's not true. Mm -mm. Can't say I take that more at heart. That's not true. Because I take it all at heart because at the end of the day, those are souls lost. Like, these are people's loved ones. I'm the type of person, the way I was raised, it doesn't matter your color, your race, your creed, you know, what you believe, what I believe may be different. At the end of the day, you're still a soul. You're still a human being. You're still my brother and my sister. That's the way I was raised. So I treat everyone with the same dignity as respect. The same dignity and respect, excuse me. I treat the cleaning person the same way I'm going to treat the CEO of the company. Same way I'm going to treat the president. Yeah, everybody gets the same respect with me, okay? Just the way I was raised. And the way I try to just live my life, you know, even with all the turmoil going on in the world. I still try to be a light, positivity, still trying to let my life shine for the Lord because that's what we were put here to do. But let me get back to this tell it to Tim, y'all, because I'm going, I'm going on my tangents. Because once I start, I'll start talking. So I'm telling it to Tim, somebody called in and had the audacity. Not even a whole week, not even a whole month, not a year later. A few days later, a couple of days later, had the audacity to say, well, if they stop running from the police, the young black men wouldn't get shot. As I've gotten older, all my years, I realize that people have a whole lot to say and a whole lot of opinions about people's hurt because it's not at their front door. Until you have to have a conversation with your young black son, your young black nephew, your young black grandson, what have you, until you have to have a conversation about you need to be careful out here because the police will kill you instead of protecting you, or people just want to see you hurt because they hate the color of your skin, you don't have nothing to say on that matter. If you don't have nothing nice to say, shut up. Don't say it at all. How about that? I'm like, okay, so you don't care about it because it's not at your front door. Your loved one is not getting killed. But my thing is always, what if you were in that mother's shoes? What if you was in that wife's shoes that just lost her, her husband, her boyfriend? just lost her son like okay do you feel the same way about the mass shooting that just happened see my thing is y'all what's wrong is wrong what's right is right violence is violence no matter how you look at it and i i just i don't know why people are sometimes so cold hearted like come on it does not matter if so I'm, I'm just gonna be honest it does not matter if someone runs from the police if they are in a vehicle there is a way to shoot at the car blow off the tires put the spikes down stop the people there is a way to handle situations without taking someone's life now mind you i know that police officers yes they put their life in the line of duty they're in the line of duty they put their life at risk every day but it does not justify killing someone who is unarmed and it happens so much and my thing is i understand that there's different circumstances different situations okay that may warrant the actions that they do and again this is not this is not everyone this is not every police officer because i know there's some good ones out there i've met some okay i met a few okay i know but there's ways to handle it outside of taking someone's life because here's my thing we always go back to the mass shootings that happened in the black church. Okay? Just here recently when the man shot up the people, like I, I've already said this earlier this week, those people didn't get shot. They, no one shot them and they were armed, heavily armed. They committed violence, but still no violence came to them. Is it because of the color of their skin? Someone just helps help me understand. Why do they deserve? Oh, Lord, I, I can't. I can't. Because I'm a... <laughs> Let me calm down. I just, I don't understand. I don't understand. And I don't want to make this page like, oh, they always fussing about something. Because it's not. But this is just daily life that we live. 
This is daily life that we live that we're seeing in our communities. At the end of the day, a loved one, loved ones, they're gone. And my question is always, was it necessary? Why did it have to happen like that? Was there another way to save that person's life? That's just my question. Because life is what's most important.